In this video, we want to take a look at something called an arc length function. Uh, now, that's a little bit different than our previous video on something called arc length, and we'll explain that difference here in just a second. But what we're trying to do is find the length of a curve up to a, um, a uh, x value that has not already been uh, defined. And so to best explain this uh, idea of an arc length function, let me actually take a step back for a moment and recall what we've done already. All right, so we know how to find the length of a curve from A to B. There was a formula for it. It was the integral from A to B of the square root of 1 plus F prime squared. You compute this definite integral, and it gives you the length from A to B. It gives you a numerical value. Well, what we're doing is, is slightly different than that. Here, here's what we're doing instead. Um, given a starting point, I want to um, not define my ending value. So, you know, perhaps we're stopping here at, at this x value, or maybe we're continuing on to this x value, or farther or farther. And I want it, um, I want this actually expressed as a function of x to where whenever I decide to give it an x value, then it will compute the arc length of that for me, but not until I give it a uh, an, an, uh, defined endpoint. So that, that's the difference there. And so it won't necessarily be s, it'll be s of x. It'll be a function of x. So whenever I tell it an x, then it will compute the arc length. So um, just based off of that discussion, you can probably guess a big part of what's going to go into this formula here for the um, for the arc length. It's going to look something like this. Rather than integrate from uh, from A up to B, you know, like a, an ending point, we're going to integrate from A up to an unknown x value. It's really just till when we decide to stop. Um, and so that's the biggest change right there. Uh, now having that not defined automatically makes this a function of x. It's not a constant it'll um, be some function of x. So we can ask what s of 7 is, or s of 9, or s of 10, and that'll be the length from a to 7, or a to 9, or a to 10. All right, so let's just say that a is here, and um, we, we can see how this, this would play out here. You would go from a up to whatever the um, chosen x coordinate is. All right, now there's another small change that's gonna happen as well though. All right, we have the integral from a to x, then we have the square root of one plus um, bracket f prime. Now here's where the difference happens. If you have a function of x, uh, this is just a, a property of, of integrals here. Um, hopefully you know that you can't have the same variable in your integrand as what would happen in a limit or occur in a limit of integration. Meaning if you're integrating from A to X, you can't have one plus F prime of X squared uh, DX. That just can't happen. So don't write this down. This, this is not correct because you have a function of X integrated up to X. Now it turns out this is an easy fix, very easy fix. Um, the only issue is you just can't have uh, the same variable here because what, what needs to happen is that whatever variables in your integrand needs to range from the already determined a and x which should be set before you start the integration process so what's the easy fix we just change the letter so we'll say f prime of most textbooks use the letter t quantity squared dt and how this works now is that the t's will range from a to x. They'll bounce back and forth between a and x. And then that will allow us to compute a definite integral. Okay, so that's important to make sure you understand that we're going to change these letters here. And so um, once an x is decided upon, then it's plugged in this formula here. You compute this definite integral. Uh, you get a numerical value, and this number represents the arc length from your starting point up to whatever that defined x value is.